Yes, you are in the building. Big Wednesday. Showing up, showing out, y'all. It is a packed house. We're so excited that you are here with us. Hey, before I go any further, do us a big, big favor. As you see people coming down the aisles, can you please squeeze in? It is going to get packed up in here. It's going to get hot, too, so get ready for that. You can get you a little Holy Spirit workout in. But, man, we're so excited for you to be with us, you to be joining us. Just so I can check the temperature in the room right now, do we got Bulverde campus in the room right now? Okay, okay. Midtown, can you beat that Midtown where you at? Oh, I like that, I like that, okay. Stone Oak, where you at Stone Oak? I love it, I love it, I love it. Hey, do me a big favor, look to your left, look to your right, will you just give somebody a fist bump? Tell them happy to see you on Big Wednesday. Maybe meet somebody you never met before. Yes, 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 absolutely. But hey, we got some exciting things going down here at North Rock Church. One of them is specifically to the Stone Oak campus, and that is I Love Saturdays. And if you have not heard about this, you need to be in the know because it's going down every single Saturday where we're doing something fun, something special, something exclusive just for our Saturday services here at the Stone Oak campus. And this weekend, we're doing some fun stuff with it being Fiesta and all, we're kicking off a little Fiesta theme. So from Kids Rock all the way to here in the auditorium, there's gonna be a whole lot of fun. So don't miss I Love Saturdays. And also, speaking of Fiesta theme, North Rock students at Rally Night is going down this weekend, this coming Sunday, and it's a Fiesta theme as well. So students, make sure you get into the building. Doors will open 6.30 right here at the Stone Oak campus. But you know, we love to have fun here at North Rock. And before we get into Big Wednesday, before we let worship come and kill it, we want to play a little game. We got a little, a little all play, okay? You don't got to get up out of your seat, nothing like that. I just need you to wave a hand for this or wave a hand for that. We're going to have some graphics on the screen. Can I get the first one, please? Okay, with Fiesta coming up, are we going to do the churro? Are we going to go funnel cake? What do y'all think? Oh, I love it. I love it. I got to go funnel cake all the way. Funnel cake, hands down. All right, do we got another one up there? Oh, y'all, it's going to be hot out there. Walking around. You go to Crocs, Birkenstock. I got to go Birkenstocks. I got to go Birkenstocks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel like it's a little more classy, a little more dressed up, you know. I have actually never even tried on a pair of Crocs. No, sh uh, no shade to the Croc wearers. All right, next graphic. What do we got? Ooh, Hydro Flask, Stanley, in the Garcia household, we're a Hydro Flask family. We saw that test that came out with Stanley. We know there's something weird going on there. So we're going to go ahead and go Hydro Flask on that one. All right, we might have one more. What do we got? Ooh, okay. Are you and your family going to do the Fiesta Parade? Or are you going to go to the Fiesta Grounds, get you a little carnival action going on? I gotta go parade, I gotta go parade. I love it, I love the parade, all right. Do we got one more? Last one, y'all, ooh, this is tough. Are you gonna go turkey leg, chicken on a stick? I gotta, I gotta go chicken on a stick. I gotta go to chicken on a stick, you already know. The turkey leg looks so good though, it looks so, so good. But hey, we're just getting started, y'all. You're in for an absolute treat. Stand to your feet, make some noise, and let's worship.
fights your battles, that's who he is, Jehovah. Jehovah needs he fights your battles, yeah. Jehovah needs he fights your battles.
your spirit stirring. I've been praying, you've been working, working it all for good. So fan the flame and keep it burning, you're refining, you're refining in the furnace. And all the waiting will be worth it, cause you're working it all for good. Come on with hands lifted up, let's sing this out. Miracle after miracle, open door after open door, here it comes, so get ready for another one, cause another one is on the way. Miracle after miracle, open door after open door, here it comes, so get ready for another one, cause another one is on the way. 
Antonio, Texas. It sounds like we serve a God of again and again and again. Does anybody believe there's another miracle in the room? There's another healing in the room. There's another restoration in the room. We might fall, but he's going to pick us back up. We might get off track, but he's going to set our feet right. We serve a God of again. We serve a God of again. He did it before. Why not do it again? Pastor, if he did it at Hardy Oak, if he did it at Reagan, if he did it in Alamo Heights, if he did it in Midtown, if he did it in Bulverde, why can't he do it again and again and again if he did it for your neighbor, if he did it for your uncle, for your grandma, if he did it for somebody else, why can't he do it for you? Do you believe the spirit of the living God is in the room tonight? Because this is... This is the atmosphere that our God wants to meet needs in the room, to show himself strong in the room, to show himself faithful in the room. We serve a gracious God who loves us, who knows exactly where you're at tonight. And I don't know about you, but he's already speaking. He's already moving. We have so much more to go, and we're going to continue to worship and we're actually going to take a moment right now to worship through communion, through communion. So here at North Rock, we practice open communion, which just simply means you don't have to be a member to participate. We invite everybody uh, to join us in this holy sacrament of communion. So uh, if you haven't already, you can begin to prepare uh, those pieces in your seats. You can grab the communion pieces, elements in your seats, and uh, you can begin to uh, peel that top layer back uh, as we prepare to take communion together, as we prepare to take communion, I just want to encourage us uh, that that communion is an opportunity to recognize the victory we have in Jesus Christ. To remember and to participate in the victory that we have in Jesus that is still available today. On that faithful night, Jesus 
had dinner with his disciples before he was crucified, what we know as the Last Supper. Jesus was ushering a new way in, a new way to God, a new life. Up until this point, it was up to humanity and our own efforts and our own attempts to cover our sin. In the Judaic law, people had to sacrifice a lamb to cover their sin, but no, this Jesus, he would be the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. No longer would we have to try in our own effort to be good enough, but Jesus himself, sufficient enough to cover the gap that separated us from our God. And so as we take communion tonight, would you remember and would you embrace and participate this victory that we have in Christ that's still available to you? It's still enough for you today, wherever you find yourself, whatever situation you're in, the communion table, the bread signifying Jesus' body broken, ripped apart, destroyed for us, the cup signifying his pure, precious blood spilled out for us, that he would provide the most miraculous miracle defeating death, hell, and the grave, providing victory for us forever if we choose to participate. Luke 22 and 19. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Once again, as we take the bread together, let's remember it's signifying the body of Jesus broken for us. Let's take the bread together. Then he took the cup and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for it many for the remission of sins. I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my kingdom. What a promise we have that we will one day get to drink of this cup with our King, King Jesus. Let's drink of the cup together. First Corinthians 11 and 26, as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In these moments, as a church family, we are declaring to ourselves, we're declaring to San Antonio, Texas, Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is risen. Jesus is enough. Praise you, God. We thank you for these moments. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Lord, we recognize your preeminence. We recognize your authority. We recognize your goodness and your faithfulness to us. As we participate in this communion, Father, we recognize the victory we have in Christ, that you are it, that your blood is enough, not our works, not our effort, just you. So let us fix our attention on you tonight. Do what you will. Speak to us. Lead us. Your will is good, pleasing, and perfect. We trust you tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. One more time, we can give him praise. Yeah. Hey, we're going to continue to worship, and over the next few songs, man, we have an incredible prayer team that would love to pray for you. This is a house of prayer. Prayer is our first response. It is never our last resort. It is not our last resort. So if you got something pressing in on you today, or maybe you don't even know how to put language to what's going on in your world, I just want to invite you to join and partner with our prayer team here and get some prayer over the next few songs. If you can't get to the prayer team for some reason, there are prayer cards in your seat back, so you can fill out that, that prayer card, and you can bring it right down front. We're going to pray for it at the end of the night. But hey, let's lean in for all that God has for us. Let's continue to worship.
was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time And sin separated The breach was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm So you made a way across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside And there at the cross you paid the debt I owed Broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I had Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glory. Took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no stain. Who else is worthy? Who else is 
it again, amen. He can do it. I'm calling on the God of Jacob. Come on, y'all got to help me sing this. Whose love endures through generations. Oh, yeah. I know that you will keep your covenant. Come on, call on him. I'm calling on the God of Moses. The one who opened up the ocean. Yeah. I need you now to do the same. How I need you now, oh, oh, oh. oh rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing, standing on your faithfulness, God.
chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. I got, I got two scriptures. Let's see, we're going to start here. Let's see where it goes. Luke chapter 8. One day Jesus said to his disciples, this is verse 22. Let's go over to the other side of the lake. How many of you know when Jesus gives a directive or says, this is what we're going to do? Number one, it's time for us to move. Number two, you can mark it down. And if he said you're going to the other side of the lake, you're going to the other side of the lake. If he said your boy is going to be healed, then your boy is going to be healed. If he said the anxiety is going to cease, then the anxiety is going to cease. If he said the depression is going to bow, then the depression is going to bow. If he said the marriage is going to be restored, then the marriage is going to be restored. If he said the addiction is going to break, then the addiction is going to break. Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat. They went. And they set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. You know why he fell asleep? Because he knew they were going to the other side of the lake. And no matter... No matter what happened, they were going to get to the other side of the lake. I think it's Mark's gospel that in telling the story says that he had a pillow. He laid down on a pillow. You you don't lay down with a pillow, you know, except if you're you're planning to sleep. His goal was to sleep, y'all, while he was sleeping. Something happened. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him. They were chaotic. Master, master, we're going to drown. Have you ever felt like you were about to drown? Some of you came to church tonight feeling like you're about to drown. Some of you woke up in the middle of the night last night feeling like you were about to drown. Some of you, the last thing on your mind before you went to sleep was that you're drowning. The first thing on your mind this morning was that you were drowning. I want you to see a picture of a Savior who was in the boat Just because you encounter a storm does not mean that Jesus is not right there with you. It doesn't mean that. In fact, it generally means that you're headed in the right direction, baby, and hell is not happy about it. But hell can't do anything about it. Can do nothing about it because Jesus is in the boat. What a stark contrast, though. Sleeping Jesus and a terrified creation. How many times is this the case in our in our life, in our world? Where, where he's he's rest, he's not afraid of the storm. He knows you're going to the other side. He's in control. He's in the boat. He's the master and maker of the wind and the rain. Master, we're going to drown. (laughs) He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and was calm. And in Luke's account, Luke said he looked at them and said, Where is your faith? Where is it? And by where, he didn't mean like initial faith. He, He meant applied faith. They had faith. Y'all, y'all, this is after he's already performing miracles. This is the same body of water. Possibly, 
probably the same boat that when they had the miraculous catch of fish in. They couldn't even haul it in. The boat was sinking because Jesus helped him after they had fished all night and caught nothing. And he said, let's try again. And, and, and they did. And, and this miraculous catch of fish, and he called them to follow him and then perform miracles. Quite possibly the exact same boat with the same Savior. So he's not wondering, do you not have faith? He knows they have faith. He's wanting them to appropriate their faith, apply their faith, use their faith. He's done it before. We've been singing about it all night. There's another one on the way. If he did it then, he'll do it now. Look back at what he has done and let that cause faith to be appropriated in your life and in your heart. He was in control last week. He's still in control today. Well, I was on the mountain last week. That's awesome. It's great. But you don't get anywhere without walking through some valleys. David said, we're going to walk through some valleys. In Psalm 23. Yeah, you know, I walk. I walk through it. We're not going to live in it. And by the end of Psalm 23, he was saying... Surely we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. We're not going to dwell in the valley. We're going to live in the house of the Lord. If he said you're going to the other side, you're going to the other side. If he's shown you the miracle, then believe it, man. Apply your faith in the face of adversity and chaos and storms and struggles. Appropriate. Call your faith up call it up there's another one on the way <laughs> another miracle another healing and there's such a there's such a hunger and a desire in, in, in the place tonight I, I love that about Big Wednesday and Jesus is here and I know he's meeting needs. I've seen ministry happen all across the front the entire night. I, I know that miracles have transpired. Miracles have taken place. But I think there's yet another one. Or two. Some of you are so... Your, your perception, your, your perspective has been so skewed by the storm and the feeling of drowning and about to sink. You failed to apply the faith that, that is in you. The, the, it, it's in you. you you've just got to call it up. Now, it's okay that the disciples, they did the right thing. Perhaps they did it with a fearful spirit instead of a faithful spirit, but they went to the right place. Jesus didn't rebuke them for coming to him. He wants you to come to him whenever you are in a situation where you're desperate, hurting, broken. He wants that. In John chapter 7, verse 37, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Jesus stood up. There was a feast going on. Jesus stood up in the streets with people all around. They had come for the celebration. They had come for the party. They had their best clothes on. They were looking good. They had their tie, their suits. They had, they, they, they had their nice tennis, tennis shoes on. They had the nice jackets on. They had, they had the right pants. They, they, they were dressed to the T. Jesus looked past all of that stuff, and he saw the inside. He saw past the exterior, and he saw the inside. And he saw in them a thirst, a, a, a hunger, a desire. They needed something, and Jesus stood up. In John chapter 7 and verse 37, and the Bible says that he said with a loud voice. You have this picture of Jesus so docile sometimes. But in this case, he, he was not quiet. He stood up and he yelled with a loud voice. If any man is thirsty, come unto me and drink. If any man is thirsty, come unto me and drink. I was thinking tonight when we were singing, give me Jesus. 
take the whole world. You can have everything else. I just need Jesus. I want that to sink deep down into our spirit and our hearts tonight. I want you to know that all you really need is Jesus. No matter what's going on around you, no matter what you've been feeling, what we're doing tonight is a remedy. We're drinking from the well that brings life. We're drinking from the well that never runs dry. We're drinking from that well of life that when you drink from this, you don't ever thirst again. Like You know you have what you need. You know you have what you need. We're going to sing one more song. And it's about the power of the name of Jesus in just a moment. But just before we do, I, I just want to say a word of prayer for you one more time. Would you close your eyes? Would you, would you lift a hand? Listen, if you, if you have a need, still, I know we, we've prayed over needs, but if there's something, something in your heart, in your life, just throw a hand. Throw a hand unashamedly in the air. Lord, thank you for this gathering. Thank you for the faith that is in the room, that is so evident, that is so present in the room. I pray that faith would be activated, that faith would be, would be appropriated in the room tonight. God, let us call faith to the surface. When faith walks into the room, fear runs out. When faith walks into the room, hopelessness has to sit down. It takes a back seat. So God, let faith, let faith cover the room tonight, Lord. Every heart, every mind, Lord Jesus. Those who are dealing with anxiety and fear, God, let peace and hope fall in their hearts in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, those who are dealing, Lord, with sickness in their body, some, some sort of affliction in their body or in their mind, Lord, we ask for healing from the great physician. We call on the name of Jesus. We pray the prayer of faith and we receive healing tonight in Jesus' name. God, those who need a fresh baptism of your spirit, Lord, we call on your name tonight. And I pray that a baptism of the Holy Spirit would fall in this room on every heart and every mind, Lord Jesus. Baptize us. Cover us with your glory. Relationships healed. Families reconciled in Jesus' name. We are going over to the other side. And we know we are, Jesus, because we've got you on board. You said it, and you're with us. We're going over in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands to him one more time. Let's sing, let's sing, let's sing. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on, shout it out. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the street. In the darkness over every day. Power in that name. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Before you go to bed tonight, speak the name of Jesus over your home, over your family, over your kids, over your husband, over your wife. You get up in the morning. I, I, I pray that God brings this to memory when you get in your car. Speak the name of Jesus over this city, over this region. God's getting ready. He's in the middle of doing something really, really, really special, but we're on the precipice of something we've never seen before. I believe that you can feel it. I believe that you can sense it. There's power in the name of Jesus. You deal with some, something tragically or difficult tomorrow, just say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. When you don't know what to do or know what to say, in Jesus' name. I dare you to try it. Man, that's one thing that my mom and my dad taught me when I was just a little boy. You just speak the name of Jesus. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, touch my son. In Jesus' name, touch my daughter. In Jesus' name, speak the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you glad you came to Big Wednesday? Amen. Amen. What a night. We could stay all night, but we can't. Uh, 
Uh, I gotta go home and take another shower. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> pouring sweat. They're gonna sing another song. Uh, and, and they didn't invite me to sing this one with them, although I've sung it many times, but it's okay. I, I don't have to sing it. Uh, but they're gonna sing another song. And uh, you're welcome to hang around, worship a little bit. But if you need to go, you're welcome to go. God bless you. I'm so glad that you came to Big Wednesday, everybody. God bless you. God bless you.